Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport. The airport team strives to make air travel accessible to all through the Sunflower Program, allowing individuals to self-identify when they need more assistance. More on the Hidden Disability Sunflower Program at CIRA.com. Normal's mayor says getting a handle on pop-up parties that have turned violent is his number one priority. It's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Tuesday, October 1st. I'm Ryan Denham, and this is WGLT's The Leadoff. Now let's lead off with how community leaders are responding to the fatal shooting that followed a large outdoor party near the heart of the ISU campus. Here's WGLT's Eric Stock. Mayor of Normal Chris Coos and ISU President Andave Tarhule struck similar tones in their first public comments after the shooting. It came at the end of the university's homecoming weekend. Koo says he's heard from residents who are worried about their safety. That's an ongoing concern, and that's why it's it's my number one priority right now, the town of Normal. Tarhuli issued a statement to the campus community calling the unsanctioned party disruptive and unacceptable. There have been several of these big parties in recent weeks, and Tarhuli calls them a strain on university and community resources. The crowd at a convenience store early Sunday reached 1,000 people when the property owner reported the gathering for trespassing and normal police tried to break up the crowd. Normal Police Department spokesperson Brad Park says officers met some resistance. Our goal is just to make it known that, that these gatherings are not um, should not be occurring. And if officers do show up and we ask you know, the, the, the groups to disperse to get a little more cooperation than we have gotten in the past. Police say they're still trying to determine who organized the weekend party. ISU Police Chief Aaron Woodruff says recent gatherings near campus have been fueled largely by music promoters on social media. Many of them like to think of themselves of as promoters, uh, so they are doing it as a maybe semi-business venture. Uh, and it may be not necessarily for direct money, but maybe they're doing it for social media attention. Police say these parties have become a problem on other college campuses across the country. Sunday's fatal shooting has prompted a homicide investigation. Normal police say no arrests have been made. The McLean County coroner released the name of the person who died, 18-year-old Randall Glass, from the Chicago suburb of Oak Lawn. A critically injured 18-year-old has not been identified and remains hospitalized. ISU has said the victims were not affiliated with the university. For the leadoff, I'm Eric Stock. Here's some other stories we're following in the WGLT newsroom. Democratic Congressman Eric Sorensen says he'll support a farm bill that does not include measures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but he says he'll still look to get those measures passed in a different way. Authorities say it was a 41-year-old Bloomington man who died early Saturday in a crash in rural Tremont. That's west of Bloomington Normal. Jeffrey Flower died when his vehicle left Town Line Road, went into a farm field. He was the only person in the vehicle. And the Salvation Army of McLean County has launched its annual coat drive with colder weather just around the corner. Coat donations can be dropped off weekdays at the Salvation Army Corps Community Center in Bloomington. Last year, over 500 were distributed. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. Candy maker Ferrero may not be done growing in Bloomington Normal. That's even though the company's new chocolate plant is now officially open. WGLT's Charlie Schlenker has more. After more than two years in development, Ferrero's $214 million plant is ramping up production of Kinder Bueno chocolate bars. Ferrero North America President Michael Lindsay says the company could even add to the plant's 200 new jobs. There's both room for expansion and we have plans to expand that I can't talk about now, but we do we want to continue to invest in Bloomington. Lindsay says other companies investing in Bloomington are seeing the same things Ferrero does. The combination of great employees, really good infrastructure, and proximity to major, major metro markets make it an absolutely ideal place to invest. When it reaches full production, all Kinder Bueno products sold in the U.S. will come from Bloomington. Ryan Peterson, the vice president of candy and impulse merchandising for Walmart, says that matters to the giant retailer. Over 86% of our Walmart customers have told us it is important for retailers to carry American-made goods. And their Kinder Bueno facility will help Walmart continue to provide the chocolate our customers crave 
and made right here in the U.S. Bloomington Mayor Mboka Mwilambwe says the start of production at the new 169,000 square foot chocolate plant is a sweet day for the community. We're not just cutting a ribbon, but we're cutting into a whole new chapter of delicious possibilities with the opening of this factory. Just reading about how Ferrero describes the Kinder Bueno candy not only makes you want to eat it by the handful, but it also makes you want to bathe in it, really. (laughs) Candy makers across the country, including Ferrero, hope they won't have to take a bath because of some unusual business sector developments this year. 45,000 union dock workers on the east and west coast have walked off the job, potentially disrupting supply chains for everything from bananas to car parts. The International Longshoremen's Association contract dispute with the U.S. Maritime Alliance, which handles ports in the U.S., could cause price increases and delays for chocolate makers as well. Michael Lindsay says that prospect is a concern, though minor. A little bit. Not so much on this center, frankly, because that's the benefit of having American production is that we have supply now inside of our borders. We do have other products that are still brought in from overseas, and we're hoping that we get to a reasonable conclusion to the port strike as soon as we can. Another obstacle is the cost of raw ingredients. Poor harvests in Ghana last year caused by drought, aging trees, and plant disease have pushed prices for cocoa used to make chocolate significantly higher. The cocoa production is very, very difficult difficult at the moment, right? So there's a global shortage in cocoa, unfortunately then exacerbated by some trading activity that's causing prices to spike further. West Africa produces more than half the cocoa in the world. Some candy makers have raised prices. So we're working diligently with our global procurement teams. We're trying to find the best quality cocoa that we can in the country, in the world, and then we're trying to make sure that we blend that into our products in the best way for our consumers. Lindsay acknowledges price pressure is a concern for mainstream chocolate makers like Ferrero, who may have to pay close to the cocoa price point previously occupied by premium chocolate makers and niche bean-to-bar producers. We're trying to absorb as much of the extra cost as we can as a company. We're trying to make sure that we're as efficient in our usage. We've seen costs start to stabilize in the cocoa market overall, so it's un- no, no, no one can predict where the prices will go. But what I can say is we'll continue to make sure our products are affordable to the American consumer. Ferrero says the Kinder brand is the most popular chocolate brand globally, but only 17th in sales in the U.S. among mainstream candy brands. Ferrero hopes production in the Bloomington plant will help change that because of shorter time to market and fresher products on shelves. It may be hard to discern how companies such as Ferrero can succeed at taste-making for the sweet-toothed public interested in a layered ingredient experience. The road is long from something like, say, Charleston Chew. That nougat-filled candy bar came out in 1922. Its mass-market popularity started to fade after a few decades. Milky Way, first made in 1924, and Three Musketeers, which dates to the 1930s, have had longer-lasting successes. Transitions aren't easy to see as they happen. For Lindsay, the North American Kinder Bueno investment by Ferrero was born in research and testing. We went through iteration after iteration after iteration globally to produce what ended up becoming the Kinder Bueno because the, it's the mix of the wafer, which is the crunchy, crispy wafer, with the cream and the classic hazelnut Kinder cream. Then you have the chocolate on top. Then you have the enrobing on top. So it's really four fundamentally different layers. They each add a whole different experience to the product. He says the Kinder Bueno has the highest repeat buy rate in the world of any product he is dealt with. Ferrero's original Bloomington plant continues to make several other brands of candy. Illinois is also home to the company's first North American Innovation Center. Those R&D labs are in Chicago. I'm Charlie Schlenker. And that's it for today. I'm Ryan Denham. And the show was produced by Rosalie Truback. You can subscribe to The Lead Off on the NPR app or wherever you get your podcasts. 